Hi, my name is Stan, and we work hard every day, and there's nothing better than coming home to, to the end of the day and having a really nice meal. And tonight it's all about cooking fresh. It's picking the freshest vegetables, it's picking the freshest seafood, and putting it together in about a half an hour to just give you a great dinner at the end of the night. Tonight we're going to be cooking with some fresh snow peas, some imported Asiano cheese, some red peppers, some onions, some fresh tomatoes, and of course some great seafood and sauces that I picked up fresh from the butcher today. First, take the time to wash all your vegetables. You want to make sure you get anything off them that you don't want to go into the food that you're cooking. Tonight we will be cooking with wine. I recommend a red wine. Uh, the wine actually won't be going in the food, but we will, I will be cooking while I drink the wine. It makes for a much better experience. Take the time to cut your vegetables up into the appropriate sizes. You want a size that's just right to fit into your mouth. So nothing too big, nothing too small that's going to get all mushy as you're, as you're going along. I like taking cherry tomatoes and cut them into halves. If you get the slightly bigger ones, you want to take those cherry tomatoes and actually cut them into thirds. Like this guy here, probably cut him one more time. As I said before, the key is to use fresh ingredients. You know, never use anything canned if possible because at the end of the day you deserve something a little bit better than something that came out of a can. Just look at the quality of these tomatoes. They're nice, they're ripe, and they taste just right. Now we take our red pepper, put your pepper open, you want to get rid of all those seeds. Now the smaller you cut your pieces, the quicker this whole meal will come together. So if you like big chunks of stuff, it's going to take you a little longer. If you like stuff that's a, if you like stuff that's a little bit finer, which I do, it'll take a little bit less. See this here? You want to get rid of this white part. That's just not going to taste as good as it can. I like to use two peppers for this recipe. That are a little smaller. If you happen to have a pepper that's a little bit bigger, you can use just one. Now the onion. You want the flavor of the onion, but you don't want the onion to be overpowered. So I'd suggest for this meal use a, a small or medium sized onion. You 
you want to use you want to make sure all the pieces are diced about the same size because you want everything to finish cooking around the same time. Here we have an onion with a bad section. We'll just cut that section right out and use the good section here. Actually, we won't use any of that. No. Grab another onion here because it looks like the first one we grabbed wasn't that good, and the second one we need uh, wasn't that good. So we're going to grab a third one, and this one actually is perfect. I'm just going to quarter these sections for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of uh, fresh garlic there, something to season the pan, make it really nice. You can hear that garlic starting to fry up there. Once we get the pan hot, and once we get everything going, we're going to add all, all of our vegetables, add our tomatoes in there. We're going to now add our peppers and our onions. The key here is not to burn anything. Once this pan gets hot, you're going to bring it down in temperature just a bit. And you're going to saute this until everything is just a soft. We're going to add to this dish a little bit of uh, ground pepper, ground garlic I should say, and the secret just a touch of red pepper. It's going to give you just the bite you need. Don't overdo it. Remember it's the end of the day. You want to be able to sleep good tonight. While your vegetables are sauteing, we're going to start to make the orzo pasta that will be used in this dish just as a, just as a little bit of extra. It's not going to be heavily pasta based, but just a little bit. The secret, of course, is using a little bit of chicken broth, okay, to cook the orzo with. You're going to mix about three quarters chicken broth to one quarter regular water. As I said earlier, key to this whole dish is fresh ingredients. So here we have some fresh shrimp that we got right down from the fish market today. Look at this stuff. These are jumbo shrimp. They look beautiful. You can see our mixture of peppers, onions, and cherry tomatoes with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of olive oil is coming along really nicely. As I said before, you add a little bit of hot pepper just to give it some flavor. And over here, as we cook our pasta, we have the secret. A little bit of chicken broth mixed in with the pasta makes it delicious. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to saute up about three or four sausage lengths of turkey sausage. I prefer the spicy uh, Italian version. Some people like the, the sweet, I rec but like I said, whatever your taste suits you, go ahead and use that. You want to brown this meat up and then we're actually going to start to mix the vegetables together. So now we have our peppers, our onions, our sausage, and our, our garlic all cooking there. On the back side of the pot, we have a stove, we have a nice uh, orzo cooked in chicken broth. And over here, we've just added our shrimp to everything. And we're going to let this all cook up for about five to ten minutes. The key is not to cook over overcook anything. He's burning it. As I said before, I cook with wine. None goes in the food, but plenty goes in me. And that is true. You're on. 
All right, so here we are. We have our vegetables cooked, we have our shrimp cooked, we have our pasta cooked, and we have our sausage cooked. So this is what we're gonna do. You can just stay focused here. And we're gonna come in with our orzo pasta. We're not gonna go heavy with the pasta here. We're gonna go in with just a little bit of pasta at the bottom. Remember, this is not a meal that's supposed to weigh you down at the end of the night. It's supposed to recharge you. Then we come in with our dish. Take a look at this, huh? We got our shrimp, we got our tomatoes, our fresh peppers, our onions, and our snow, uh, our snow peas. Make sure you get a little bit of the juice down into the pasta. It almost gives it, almost gives it that dish that, uh, oh, what's that Portuguese dish they make? It's really good. The, uh, not the zuppa de pesce, that's the Italian. Bouillabaisse. The, base. the bouillabaisse, there we go. Okay, put a little extra with the shrimp. Put a little bit more of the juice in there. Always want to give enough in case someone else wants some. Although, there's only one person that eats pasta in this, in this family. Mm -hmm. Seafood, I should say. Get a lot of the juice in there. You're going to serve this with a spoon. You're not going to serve this with a dish, with a fork. Here's the final product. You take a little bit of the Asiano cheese. Not a lot, you sprinkle over the top. Bon appetit.